Howdy folks. I was just wanting to show a uh, few of my bottles that are on my bottle collection. I've actually been a bottle collector for years. Since really probably the off and on since about the early 70s. But I only keep certain bottles. A lot of these I've gave away over the years. But uh, I'm just going to show you some of them. Some of these, that's why you see people crawl under houses. Because these old dump houses, you find them just laying on the ground. It looks almost brand new. And the 10240 said that, you know, you used to really need a boost at uh, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. So you grab your Dr. Pepper three times a day, keep you working. This is a uh, Rumford Chemical Works bottle. You can find these in different shades. I've actually got more than one shade of them. And like I say, you can, well, you guys that collect bottles know about the tops of them. You can tell by how far the seam goes up. In uh, 1901, they started making them by the bottle presses. So. Anyway, this is a bottle of. Uh, Benedictine. It's kind of hard to read it. I should have wrote it in white. Here's another 10-2-4 Dr. Pepper. This one is a, uh, you ain't really gonna be able to see it probably, but it says uh, Edison uh, Battery Oil, made in USA, Thomas A. Edison Incorporated. So I thought that was pretty cool. Like I said, you can find these on the ground laying around. And uh, this old poison bottle. And the reason they uh, put these ribs on there is so in the middle of the night you didn't uh, take the wrong medicine. This would cure everything, I'd imagine, because you'd be dead once you swigged out of this one. But like I say, you, you feel these ribs, you can tell it's dangerous. Okay, this one I found in the river, and I don't know how it looked this good because like I say it was underwater I just happened to find it and even when I first looked at the bottom of it I started shaking and uh, it says uh, warranted flask WB Dawson fine wines and liquors Jacksonville Florida and uh, it's probably around 1880s uh, I love that bottle. Okay, this one here. If you find these, you really need to hang on to because anytime it says stuff like this, they're worth more money than normal. This is a Davis vegetable painkiller. Anytime they say something like painkiller, cure, stuff like that, hang on to them. I can't remember what this bottle was when I found it, but. I think back in the day it was $75. I don't know about the market now. It's been, I've had that in a long time. This one is a straight side of Coke bottle. They didn't always have the girlish figure. And uh, I'm looking for them older than this, but you guys that find these know about these Coke bottles. And, uh, Like I say, I, I don't really want to clean these. I want to leave them just like they are. You can make it look a lot better, but I ain't messing with it. But it's even pretty nice color. Okay, second to last bottle. This one I actually bought, and uh, it's a little dusty. Supposedly, 
even when I got it unopened since the 1800s. And uh, hope the top don't break off on me. As you can see in there, but what's the trip about it is uh, this is how they try to get away with the taxes. And I'll try to read this to you. It might take me a little bit, but it says Dr. Stewart's target tonic bitters. Average 20% of alcohol by volume content, 20 fluid ounces. A laxative and tonic. Any reputable physician will tell you that the liver, kidneys, and bowels are the main sewers of the body. Keep the stomach and the blood in good order, and nature will do the rest in keeping off diseases. And then it says directions, tablespoon before each meal. Prepared by the Stewart Brothers Medicine Company, Columbus, Ohio, price $1.25. But what's funny is when you read the back of it, it tells you about why they shouldn't pay tax. You see, it might not show up. If you look down there, that's what uh, cockroaches over the years will do. They'll eat the paper. You can see where they've been gnawing on it. But it says, important decisions giving on Dr. Stewart's tonic bitters. The following opinion was given by Attorney General Watson, July 30th, 1888. Bitters, which are recognized as medicine and commonly used as such, even though they contain a large percent of alcohol, cannot be regarded in the same category as intoxicating liquors, as that expression is ordinarily understood. Nor do I think the legislature intended to include them within the term intoxicating liquors as used in the statutes, and in my opinion, the vendor such not need pay the tax. And then it's a uh, decision of James Noonan, Newman, internal revenue collector, and it says uh, something may inform Dr. Stewart that his have been tested and are regarded as something and that no tax will be held to fruition the sale thereof when sold by the bottle and the original label packages is issued from his laboratory. And uh, like I say, in this last bottle, this is a uh, bottle for uh, <laughs> Jack Squat Digger. This is you, man. <laughs> you look right there. The Yahoo. <laughs> Top blowing off through the guy's hat, but what's funny is look down here. Okay, he don't got the rubber boots on, but he got the rifle now. <laughs> Let me read the other side to you. <laughs> Made from flavors specially blended in the traditional hillbilly style. <laughs> It'll tickle your innards. <laughs> anyway, this one's for you, Jack Squat. Ha, 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 ha.